Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Hi. Happy Monday. How are you, Mauricio? I'm fine. And you? Doing great. Happy because we have another week ahead of us. <laughs> How was the weekend? I'm fine. Did you go out? Yeah. Where did you go, yeah. Mauricio? In at uh, uh, the beach. Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't been to the beach like maybe like three months. I have like three or four months that I haven't been to the beach. <laughs> I want to go. <laughs> so cool that you went. Oh, hi, Wendy. Hi, Vladimir. Hi, Jose. How are you? Hi, Emerson. Hi, Abigail. Good evening, teacher. How are you doing today? I want to say hi, Emerson. All right. So how was the weekend, guys? Did you have a busy weekend? Or did you have a relaxing weekend? Let's see. Mauricio was telling he went to the beach. What about you guys? Did you have a good weekend? I work in the weekend. Oh, it's true. But you rest on Sundays, right? Yeah. <laughs> what did you do yeah. on Sunday? Did you relax? Or Maybe. Did you just... <laughs> or do you use it to do more things? Um, well, uh, I rest the middle day. Okay. Do you run errands on, on Sunday? Um, Run errands. Oh. Hacer mandados. <laughs> <laughs> run errands. Do you run errands on Sunday? Um. It's usually not possible on Sunday. Everybody want to relax on Sunday. So. <laughs> so, but it's nice. If you were able to relax and rest, that's enough, right? <laughs> More than enough. All right. Hi, Juan Carlos. How are you? Hi, Miss. I'm fine. How was the weekend? Uh, I, I, I can't. Work. I rest. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. So, guys, we are going to begin tonight's class with a review. This is going to be about comparative. Okay. So, remember for comparative, you use them usually, the um, comparative adjectives. If you remember, comparative adjectives are usually used literally with a specific structure, right? Do you remember what is the structure for comparatives? Can you give me a sentence with a comparative? Anyone, can anyone give me one sentence with a comparative? For example, when you say uh, my housing Emilio is more tall than uh, my housing exactly right em Emilio, for example. <laughs> exactly, you are specifying right. There is a specific structure, so we're gonna do a review on that tonight. All right, so we're gonna play a Kahoot game to get ready. We're going to start with a Kahoot reviewing the topic of comparatives and then some other things we have been saying. So, you know the drill, you know the instructions. You can scan the QR code or you can go to the link and then type the code, the pin that you see on the screen and enter your name. Okay. Pueden escanear el código QR o pueden digitar la dirección o ir al link que les mandé en el chat de Zoom. Y ingresan el número de PIN que está en pantalla y su nombre con el que van a participar. Okay. And we're going to send it to the group as well. Thank you. 
We have the game pin. You also have it in the chat in WhatsApp in case you want to enter from there to make it easier for you. Okay, we're going to give you five minutes to start getting into the game. Vayan ingresando los que ya están conectados a la clase. Lo voy a decir en español. Pueden entrar al link que se los mandé acá en el chat de Zoom o el que se tienen en el chat de WhatsApp. En, ingresan el PIN, ingresan su nombre y con eso participan. O escanean el código QR, los va a llevar a la misma página. En, ingresan el PIN, ingresan su nombre y con eso ya están participando. ¿Ok? Vamos a esperar a que se una la mayoría. Los que ya están ahí, por favor, no se desconecten. We're waiting for the other ones. We're going to give five minutes for everyone to connect. We have nine people. We should have at least seven people connected in the game. We have six people. For the ones that are just connecting right now, we're going to play Kahoot to make sure you get in. You can go to the link, www.kahoot.it. Type the pin, enter the pin, enter your name, and you can participate in the game. or you can scan the QR code, it will take you to this page. Enter the pin, enter your name, and you will be participating already. Okay. Welcome, good evening everyone. The ones that are connecting right now, we want you to log in to Kahoot, right? We're going to give a few more minutes. Okay. No se desconecten los que estaban ahí, por favor. La idea es que se conecten todos o la mayoría. All right. Okay, Jorge, that's fine. The other ones, please connect to the game. We need at least we need at least seven or eight people to begin. Wendy, ¿por qué se desconectó del juego? Ahí estamos muy bien. Wendy ya estaba. We need one or two more people before we can begin. Make sure you enter the game. We have 10 people connected. We need at least seven or eight connected. Right. All right. It's 8 10, so we are going to begin in a few minutes. In a few moments. Let's begin. And we have the first question. This is review for intermediate, right? All right, select the correct structure for comparatives. Remember the trick. If you don't remember the structure, try to make a sentence following each structure. And see if you can make a sentence using it. That would be your structure. Remember the structure for comparative. Traten de hacer oraciones con cada estructura para asegurarse que tengan la correcta. Five, 
four, three, two. And we completed it. Yes. <laughs> Yay. Most to be remembered. Perfect. Yes. The structure would be subject plus verb, a comparative adjective, the word then, because you're comparing with another one, mm -hmm. then the other one. Okay? For example, I work harder than my friends. Her sister is taller than her, etc. Right? So mm, the yellow one, subject than comparative, not possible, right? And then this one also not possible. The structure would be this one. Okay. For example, we are happier than the neighbors. Okay. So always try to make a sentence with the structure to make sure that you are having the correct one, right? So very good. This is a scoreboard right now. Wendy in the first place, Wendy, very good job. Then we have Jose Carlos and Juan Carlos in third. Let's go with number two. For this one, you just have to select the correct sentence. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Two people made a mistake. Okay. The red one, it was close, but it couldn't be that one because it's not using a comparative adjective. It's using a regular adjective, right? So it was the blue one because it's showing the, com the comparative adjective more difficult. Very good. <laughs> okay. Let's do this for now. Okay, when Carlos going in the first place, Jose Carlos second, and then Avi on the third place. Let's go with question number three. This provides protection against all risks of physical loss or damage to freight. Yes, that was correct. Cargo insurance provides protection against risk. So insurance, risk, where that was right there in front of you. <laughs> All right. We have Juan Carlos in the first place, Abby in the second, and Maida coming from the fifth place to the third place directly. Very good. Let's go with question number four. Overtime. Overtime A.
Okay. <laughs> yes. Only one person got it incorrect. All the others, overtime is when you work more than the normal working hours in a day. That's why it's so over the time, right? <laughs> Perfect. That is correct. I don't like doing overtime in my life, but it's real. My God, coming from the third place directly to the first one. <laughs> I'll be keeping the second and I'm kind of going to the third. Okay, let's go with question number five right now. A shift is Okay, <laughs> we got split answers, but yeah, so it couldn't be the work, the blue one. Extra working time in a day or a week, we saw it in the previous one, it was awkward, so that cannot be. And the green one, it says, is the same as your break time. Not possible, the break time is literally that, your break time, right? For you to eat, it's not, or take breakfast, et cetera, right? It's your break, your time to not be working. But the shift is the time of the day when a person works, right? For example, I work from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then I work from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., right? So that's my shift. Those are my shifts. Basically, it's like similar to your schedule, your work schedule, right? Okay. So now Lily was coming from the bottom to the top on second place very good and then when Carlos and first place back again let's go then with question number six this is a legal demand by a shipper to a carrier for financial compensation this is for a loss or damage of a shipment All right, so the freight claim insurance, exactly. A claim, it's a demand, basically, right? It's a legal demand, a claim. So that's what it is. Cargo insurance, it was not possible. It's the last one we saw. So let's check the scoreboard right now. And we got the scoreboard keeps the same as the previous one, right? So let's go with question number seven. This is the process of keeping something in good condition. And this one went really fast. This is maintenance. This was super easy for you guys. You know this. <laughs> maintenance, it's literally keeping something in good condition. All right. Scoreboard 
doesn't move, doesn't change for the third time. So that's good. And let's check the last question. And this one is easy. Also, you just have to select the correct thing. And <laughs> okay, biggest on the blue one, not possible because that is a superlative, not a comparative, right? It would have to be, we have bigger in that case, yes, that's comparative. But this one, biggest is superlative, not possible, right? So the correct one was the green. We worked harder than our friends. We worked harder than our friends, right? So very good. Let's check the finals for the podium. Very good, Lilibet in third place. Juan Carlos in the second place. And number one, the first place for Jose Carlos. Yay, that's very good. <laughs> Impressive, you guys. Impressive. <laughs> All right. Okay. Just a moment. So we're going to stop it. All right. So for tonight, there is a topic that we want to review, and that's going to be a very basic one, but a very useful one, and one that you can easily make mistakes if you don't remember the structures. So this one, I'm talking about simple paths, right? We're going to review simple paths just to make sure we are not forgetting some of the rules that we use, right? So in this case, we're going to check this part. I need a volunteer to read this, please. Definition of the simple past tense and example. Definition of simple past tense. Go ahead. The simple past tense is something called uh, the pretority to use to talk about a uh, completed action in the time before now. This simple past is a basic form of pace of past tense in English. Uh, the time of the action can be in the recent past of the distant past. An action during is not important. Example, John Cabot, Cabot, mm -hmm. silent, silent to America into 1498. Mm -hmm. uh, my father, my father died last year. Died. He died. Mm -hmm. He lived in Fiji in nineteen uh, six uh, seventy six. Mm -hmm. We crossed the channel yesterday. Very good. Thank you. So yes, simple path. We literally use it for different versions, right? It can be for completed actions that happened in any time before right now, right? And one part that is not relevant is the duration. Okay, How long was that happening? It's not relevant in simple past. It's relevant in past progressive, but in not in simple past. Okay, let's go with the second portion. Um, Emerson, could you help us read this section, please? Okay. You always use a simple past when you say when well, something happened. So it is associated with a certain past time expression. Frequency? Frequency often, often, sometimes, always. I sometimes working. 
I'm, I'm a long time. And the other one, I often? I often buy my lunch to school. All right, thank you. So yes, simple past. Again, as I was telling you, when you're speaking in simple past, it doesn't matter so much the duration, it matters when it happened, right? When did that happen in the past? And when you want to specify that, you can use frequency adverbs like often, sometimes, always, right? For example, when I was a, when I was a child, I was always listening to Selena music. When I was a child, I was always listening to Selena music. That's fast progressive. But if I want to say in simple past, I can say when I was a child, I always listened to Selena music. I always listened to Selena music. Right, so you can use either or, and then let's go with the next section. Do we have a volunteer to read this? The other scenario for simple class, Wendy, please read this part. Wendy, please. Mm, I think she cannot hear us, okay. Um. Juan Carlos, could you help us read in this second scenario, please? Okay. Um, uh, the final point in time, uh, last week when I was a child, yesterday, six weeks ago, we saw a good film last week. Yesterday, I arrived in Geneva. Geneva. Mm -hmm. Geneva, uh -huh. Geneva. Uh -huh. she finished, she finished her work at seven o'clock. Uh -huh. I went to the theater last night. Correct. So the second scenario where you can use simple past is when you can mention an action, when you want to mention an action that happened in a definite point in time, right? Very similar to when, when you want to specify when, right? So you can say last week. When I was a child, yesterday, last year, six weeks ago, last month, right? And these ones are known as expressions of time. I told you back a couple of weeks back, I told you that expressions of time are very exclusive to each drama tense. For example, simple present has very specific expression of time. And then simple past also has very specific expressions of time. They gotta be related and referring to the past, right? And then we have this, um, the third scenario for past, an indefinite point on, in time, right? The other day, the other day can be yesterday, can be Saturday, can be last week. When I say this expression, the other day, I'm not saying I, an, a definite, I'm saying indefinite, but I am mentioning that it is in past. I am implying that it already happened ages ago, ages ago. I'm not saying in 1999, in 2001, last year. I'm not saying a specific. So that's why we call them indefinite points of time, right? A long time ago. A long time ago, I was a student. A long time ago, I was a student, right? So that's indefinite time. I'm not saying when. But it is related to simple past. Okay? So you can speak in past whether you mention the specific read at the specific time, a definite point in time, or an indefinite point in time, right? And then we have a little note in here. It tells you the word ago, like two years ago, long time ago, ages ago, is a useful way of expressing the distance into the past. For example, two years ago, 10 days ago, right? Or ages ago, a long time ago, right? We usually place it after the period of time, a week ago, two years ago, a minute ago. This one is exclusive to the simple past tense, right? Now, one thing that is important when you're speaking in past tense is that you must, this is mandatory, this is literally an obligation. You have to know the verbs in past. 
if you don't know the verb in past, you are not going to be able to speak in simple past, right? Because the same, the structure, for example, the structure for affirmative sentences is very simple. Subject and the verb in past. Okay. Here it says ed because it's speaking about regular verbs. But in reality, the formula is subject and the verb in past. I don't say ed specifically because if we're talking irregular, the verb can be different, right? I skip, right? I dreamed, okay? I ate. I went, I was, okay? There is no there is no auxiliary when I'm speaking in a simple past affirmative. In the affirmative version, I gotta know what is the word in past, right? We studied, they practiced, she sang, they ran, okay? So for the negative version, it's a little bit easier because you have an auxiliary, you don't have to change the verb, right? Because you have auxiliary, you don't change the verb. It remains in the base form. Example, they didn't go or they did not go. The same, right? Or I didn't drink water this morning. In affirmative, I drank water. In affirmative, I changed it to past because I don't have auxiliary. In negative, I have auxiliary, so I don't have to change the verb. Okay, affirmative, I drank water this morning. Negative, I didn't drink water this morning. Okay. And it's really cool, it's really easy because you have only one auxiliary for all the subjects, right? When you're speaking action verb, did is your auxiliary for all the subjects. Now, if you're speaking with the verb to be, it can be what or it can be where, depends, right? And for the interrogative, for the questions, you know that you remember, you remember that you start the questions with auxiliary, right? For example, did she arrive? Did I drink water? I don't remember type of water, right? And then in negative, same, but you are the negative. Didn't I drink water? Didn't you play? Right? You're asking in negative, same exercise. And then you have, we have a table with examples. I need a person to read the examples, please. Affirmative, negative, interrogative. Affirmative, negative, interrogative. I need one volunteer, please. Me teacher. Go ahead, please. Okay. Affirmative. I walk. I didn't walk. Did I walk? You walked. I didn't walk. Did you walk? He walked. He didn't walk. Did he walk? Mm -hmm. We walk. We didn't walk. Did we walk? Mm -hmm. They walk. They didn't walk. Did they walk? All right. So, I, again, this is what I was telling you. In affirmative, you literally only need subject and verb in past. In affirmative, you don't need an auxiliary. So the subject, verb in past. I walked all morning. She walked in the park yesterday, right? In negative, it's a little easier because you don't have to change the verb. You keep it in simple form because you have auxiliary. I didn't walk. I didn't go to the park. She didn't walk in the park, right? And for the questions, you just move the auxiliary to the beginning, right? Did she walk? Did she walk in the park? Did I walk in the park, right? That's the only difference, the position where you're gonna use. Those are for action verbs, okay? Those are for action verbs. Now, if you're going to stick with the verb to be in past or have or to do, you know that the auxiliary, sorry, the verb to be in past has two versions. In present and is are. In past only was or where. I was, he was, she was, it was. Everyone else, you were, we were, you were, they were. And for half, the past is half for all of the verbs, all of the subjects, and these for all of the subjects. So the verb to be is the only one that might change a little bit depending on the subject. Okay? Do you have questions until this point? Do we have questions? 
Is it all clear? Super, super clear. Yes. Okay. So there is a rule. Well, there are actually three rules that you have to remember. What do you remember? What are those rules for simple path? For the regular verbs specifically, there is a rule that you have to follow. There are three different rules that you follow for each, depending. There are three types of pronunciation. In fact. Do you remember them? Okay, we're gonna check it right now. Just give me one moment. Trying to get the long, the bigger picture here. All right. We are not going to watch it here. I'm going to show it to you right now. There are four regular verbs. Do you remember I told you regular verbs? In fact, they all finish in ED. All the regular verbs in past finish the same way. ED, cold, cleaned, offer, sniffed, wanted, needed. If it's a regular verb, it will forever end with an ED in past. Regular verb. The irregular, as you know, they can be the same or they can change. But even though the regular verbs, they all finish in the same ed, 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 there are three different forms that you can pronounce them. You cannot pronounce them the same. They have the specific rules for pronunciation in fact. All right. So, for example, if the verb in present finishes in letter T, for example, once, you will make the pronunciation wanted. wanted, or if it finishes in D, needed, right? Any verb that finishes in T or D in present, you're going to make an extra syllable. It, wanted, needed, okay? Also, if it has the sound of the T or the D, okay? Now, if your verb finishes in these letters, in present, you sound like, right? Sounds literally like help, look, sniff, laugh, wash, watch, kiss, then fix. Pay attention, I'm not saying help, it, look at it. No, the ED doesn't sound with these letters, okay? It only sounds it. If the verb finishes in TRD, if it finishes in anything else, it's right. But then if it finishes in any of these letters, L and R, if it finishes in any of these letters in present, your pronunciation in past is going to be oh. uh, 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 right, it's gonna be stuck. For example, cold, cleaned, offered, damaged, loved. Used, amazed, rubbed, famed, right? So this one is like pick, this one is like, right? Help, called, looked, cleaned, sniffed, offered, laughed, damaged, washed, loved, right? This is very strong and it is very soft. I cannot pronounce an extra syllable, call it, clean it. No, that's not correct, right? You're not speaking correct. And especially you are not speaking as advanced, right? The only scenario where you pronounce the ED is if your verb finishes in York, right? All the others, it's either, right? That's how you know that. So if you wanna take a picture for that, make sure, right? So from now on, when you're speaking in past, Remember the pronunciation rules for the verbs in regular, okay? So here's what you're gonna do right now. We're gonna go to the breakout rooms and you're gonna create a conversation talking about something in past, right? You can, obviously you can bring more tenses. You can mix more tenses in your conversation, that, that's okay. But the main, the main requirement, you have to use mostly simple past. Okay, we need you to use mostly simple past. All right, please bear with me. 
Okay, it's an open topic conversation. It can be any topic that you want. You're going to have 15 minutes to create this conversation in simple past. It can be negative past, affirmative in past, questions in past, which or if you can incorporate all of them, that's even better, right? Please create conversations that are not too short. Okay? And that makes sense. Wait. <laughs> no, you always do that. Las salas están abiertas. Tienen 15 minutos a partir de este momento para ingresar y crear la conversación using simple paths. Oh, or Mrs. I saw, I saw that somebody was asking for help. Yes, we are trying to share the screen. Oh, bear with me, please. I'm not, I'm not this thing. And can you try right now and see if it works now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. All right. Okay.
Okay, now that we're all back, let's begin hearing those conversations that you created to practice and refresh simple path. All right, so we're going to begin with room number one. And here we have Juan Carlos Herrera, Eduardo Magaña, and Wendy Ramirez. Go ahead, guys. Eduardo, Juan Carlos, Wendy. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, now uh, I yes, yes, I, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Um, hello, Eduardo. How are you? I am doing great, my friend. What about you? What did you do yesterday? Uh, uh, I great too. Uh, yesterday, uh, I I was rest. <laughs> I was resting at home. I felt very tired and I have I have been very busy uh, the last two weeks. Uh, what about you? In my case, my family decided to go to the beach. So we went to the beach and really spent the time together. And we ate a delicious food uh, around the beach. It was incredible. Ah, okay. Um, I don't know. Uh, I I hear uh, there was a, a strong wave yesterday. Is it, right? <clears throat> yes, we are completely right. Uh, we had a, a serious problem when we went on the beach. Uh, but for the reason, I decided to leave the gym with my family early, and just to to visit other place. To we ate uh, some pupusas, delicious right. You know. Uh, okay. Did you go any else? Uh, pupusa, right? Yes. In this case, we decided to leave the the beach and we ate uh, delicious pupusas near to the beach, and after we we went to the house. Okay. Okay. Um. I yesterday I was uh, with my family watching a. A, a series uh, called uh, Vikingos. Uh, have you ever seen seen them? Uh, honestly, I have. I never. I have never watched Vikingos before. But absolutely, we will try. To, I will try to watch the series uh, later. Uh, thank you for for remember me and how I hope you had a great day. Ah, okay. Well. Uh, thanks, Eduardo. Uh, I I hope uh, we can uh, we can see you soon. Absolutely, just call me and we will spend the time together, my friend. Maybe on the beach. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Take care. <laughs> okay. Very good. Room thanks. number one, Eduardo Juan Carlos. I like that it was a very very fluent conversation. Very natural. And you only, you didn't only speak in past, you were mixing past progressive, simple past, even a little bit of simple future, right? So you did the transition from each time, you used it correctly, the sentences were formed in the right way. So excellent guys, very good job with that. Thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna listen to conversation for room number three. Room number three, we have Jose Romero and Nelly Lilibe. Go ahead. Yes, let me have a please. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Good evening, Lilibet. How are you? I'm pretty good. Thanks. And you? I'm a little tired because I I made mainly decoration for Independence Day. Oh, that's cool. Did you enjoy making decorations? Mm, to be, I'm honest with you. I don't enjoy making them at all. Have you ever tried it? Yes, I love it. 
I remember when I was in the high school, I did a lot of holidays decorations. Which was your favorite holiday? Yes, Easter or Independence Day? My favorite holiday was Independence Day because I like to see the bands played. Oh, great. Okay. Hey, miss. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No problem. <laughs> okay. That was a short conversation, but it was very well executed. You follow all the rules in the different scenarios where you could use simple files, and you did it correctly. Also, it was very fluent. So, congratulations. Very well used. Thanks. And now, we're going to go to room number four. We're going to listen to conversation from Emerson, Mauricio, and Maya. Go ahead, guys, please. Okay. Hey, hello, Emerson. Myra. Hi, Maldis. How are you? Ah, I'm fine. Uh, where did you go last weekend? Well, I, well, I went to the Cerro Verde with my family. Oh, wonderful. And you, Myra? Um... I didn't go anywhere. I was at home all day. I cleaned my house. I did cleaning. In my case, um, the Sunday I was at beach. Uh, what was your first your your job, Maya? My. Uh, I worked for I worked I worked for many years in a call center. I was a supervisor. And you, Emerson? Well, in my case, I worked in a restaurant for eight years. Okay. And do you like work in that place? Mike? Honestly, I I didn't like because I the company is a it was a, a a problematic and but I got a lot of experience in the in the customer service. Oh. And you tell me Emerson. Well, yes, I did. I like work. Uh, what about you, Maurice? Uh, what, what's your first job? Uh, my first job, my first experience was a, a car salesman. But, but it didn't sell. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Room number four. I like that you kept this, the topic was very simple. Like, what was your first job and did you like the experience? And you kept it completely, completely got right with the structure. Also, you did the pronunciation. Um, yes, I liked it. No, I didn't like it. So very good. Good job with that. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. All right. So now we're going to watch a short video. And this is very short. We're going to watch it and we'll discuss it later, okay? We'll discuss it afterwards. So let me share with you. Okay, let's watch it the first time. Hi, this is James from Fishbowl. This is Whiteboard Wednesday. Today we are going to talk about what are common inventory problems. There are way too many to list, but let's just go over a couple that are very common. Uh, we've got old products sitting on the shelf, whether we're just not using it, it's not shipping out often enough, or we've forgotten about it, it's expired, etc. We have number discrepancies between what's in our book or abacus compared to what's on our shelves. Uh, very big problem, very common, so don't feel alone. Improper log, meaning we're not 
putting in the in, uh, information that we have about our inventory into that spreadsheet, into our computer, whatever we're using to track all of those things and our processes. Uh, no one knows, man, this is way too common. You may have a grasp of what's happening in your company, but if your employees don't know where products are, how much they have, how much they're supposed to be coming in, that is a very real problem. Too much stuff. This is kind of similar. All these are kind of very linked together. Oftentimes companies think they need all these products, all these goods, and they don't know what they're ordering. They don't know how much they have on hand at that very moment, or they just keep ordering it thinking eventually it'll sell. You better have a strategy as to what you're trying to do with all that stuff. Uh, or they overskew. This is something where you have maybe one, two products sitting on the shelf with a whole host of numbers and SKUs to incorrectly scan in right next to it. Make sure your stuff's organized. Now with all these, you can really get into some details and you should dig into why this may be the case. But the first thing you should probably do is address what is your process. Understand your process behind each one of these. So if you're having discrepancies in your inventory, for example, you should definitely understand is there improper scrapping going on? Are we not receiving enough of an order from a supplier? Are we not shipping out what we've put in our books? If you don't know what's coming in and going out on a day-to-day -day basis, there's a very real problem that needs to be addressed and it can be done, but you have to start by knowing what is the process behind the problem that you are having at that moment. So, just a few of the problems that you may face, and if there's something where you need automated software solutions, feel free to check out Fishbowl. Lots of features that cover all. All right, if you notice, this one, we weren't using subtitles. But I want to see what you were able to understand, or would you, want, would you like to watch it one more time, and this time with the subtitles? <clears throat> I would like to watch again. All right. Let's in my case, one. I don't know about the others. Would you like subtitles or not subtitles? Do you want a challenge? <laughs> mm, in my case, no. All right. Let's play it again. <clears throat> and we're going to do it without subtitles the second time. And try to get some, try to get at least one comment, even if it's a short comment of something you understand. Okay. Hi, this is James from Fishbowl. This is Whiteboard Wednesday. Today we are going to talk about what are common inventory problems. There are way too many to list, but let's just go over a couple that are very common. Uh, we've got old products sitting on the shelf, whether we're just not using it, it's not shipping out often enough, or we've forgotten about it, it's expired, etc. We have number discrepancies between what's in our book or abacus compared to what's on our shelves. Uh, very big problem, very common, so don't feel alone. Improper log, meaning we're not putting in the in, uh, information that we have about our inventory into that spreadsheet, into our computer, whatever we're using to track all of those things and our processes. Uh, no one knows, man, this is way too common. You may have a grasp of what's happening in your company, but if your employees don't know where products are, how much they have, how much they're supposed to be coming in, that is a very real problem. Too much stuff. This is kind of similar. All these are kind of very linked together. Oftentimes companies think they need all these products, all these goods, and they don't know what they're ordering. They don't know how much they have on hand at that very moment, or they just keep ordering it thinking eventually it'll sell. You better have a strategy as to what you're trying to do with all that stuff. Uh, or they overskew. This is something where you have maybe one, two products sitting on the shelf with a whole host of numbers and SKUs to incorrectly scan in right next to it. Make sure your stuff's organized. Now with all of these, you can really get into some details and you should dig into why this may be the case. But the first thing you should probably do is address what is your process. Understand your process behind each one of these. So if you're having discrepancies in your inventory, for example, you should definitely understand is there improper scrapping going on? Are we not receiving enough of an order from a supplier? Are we not shipping out what we've put in our books? If you don't know what's coming in and going out on a day-to-day -day basis, there's a very real problem that needs to be addressed and it can be done, but you have to start by knowing what is the process behind the problem that you are having at that moment. So just a few of the problems that you may face and if there's something where you need automated software solutions, feel free to check out Fishbowl. Lots of features that cover all of these dilemmas. 
um, and we'll make sure to keep addressing more of these things. That's this why. All right. So let me hear your comments about the video. What things he mentions and what do you think about it or what do you understand? Um, Jose Romero, please. Okay, miss, what I understood when I saw the video was that he was talking some similar to the four R's for him. For example, you have to get the right product in the right place in the right time. This is for too much stuff. And also because, also I call, it calls my attention was the, the before when they say no one knows that maybe the product is disorganized. So that one calls me attention because we have to be a, a, a warehouse in order, right? That exactly. calls my attention about the video. It's just not, it's not just about having a space or a big warehouse. If you don't have it in order, right? Very good, good comment, Jose, very complete. Let's see the others, do you have comments? Do you have a comment, Mauri? Uh, yes, teacher, a little comment. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, the common inventory problem is uh, it because uh, uh, he don't he don't uh, program he doesn't with he doesn't any program uh but uh, manage uh, the product the first uh, the number uh the call um uh, information inform incorrect information in lo the conocimiento teacher the knowledge the knowledge uh the product the manage management management and the the author the All inventory right. the inventory uh uh, right. ser must, must be updated. Must be updated. Very good. Only Thank you, Mauricio. Good. good comment. Do we have anyone else with a comment from the video? Do we have anyone else with a comment over there? Okay. If not, do not worry. I'm going to show you guys the following. Okay. Um, we have a link in here. I'm going to send it to, through WhatsApp. Okay. I'm going to send this link on WhatsApp, but I want you to check it first here. Okay. You're going to use this link in the groups. You're going to go to the breakout rooms and in groups, you're going to explain each of the points. Okay. These are the most challenging warehouse problems, right? The biggest ones that you could have in a challenge, uh, in a warehouse. So we have five different challenges. So we're gonna have three groups, three to five groups. Each group is going to explain one or two problems, okay? You're going to read this link in the group, okay? You're going, for example, room number one, you will explain challenge number one, okay? It's, you're going to read it in the groups, you're going to analyze it and discuss it, and then you're going to come here and you're going to explain it to the rest of the class. Okay, room number two, you will have this number two and so on and so forth, okay? So we are going to create the breakout rooms. You bear, bear with me for a moment. Okay, all right. The rooms are gonna be open. I will send you the, this link in a moment. Le voy a enviar este link por WhatsApp. Cada sala va a tener o el que le corresponde. Sala 1, el, el challenge 1. Sala 2, el challenge 2. Sala 3, el challenge 3. Okay? 
lo analizan, leen, lo discuten y luego lo explican lo que ustedes captaron. Y si pueden poner ejemplos, even better, ¿ok? Las salas están abiertas, tienen 15 minutos a partir de este momento. You can go in. Pueden ingresar a la sala. Estaba con Wendy, no sé por qué me sacó. Ok, ahorita. Lo voy a mover a la sala 2, lo voy a mover a la sala 3, pero no vaya a estar el 2, porque regrese a la 2. Eh, ahora, ya está en la 2. No, 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 ahí hemos estado platicando. De todo, de todo poco. Ya. Esta fue una gran cosa para allá. Una tierra grande. Con el grande y la chiquita. La grande y la chiquita. Ya había limpiado aquí, pero se acabaron los escondidos.
Mañana la va a llevar o se la dejó otra Mira, 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 Jabón. Bueno, pasa también porque ahí está haciendo tren. Mira, que estaba peleando. Mira, que estaba peleando.
Chica. Okay, we are all back to the session again. So let's begin. We're going to start with room number one. And room number one had to explain the challenge number one, which is the warehouse layout. Okay, so we're going to listen to the explanation and summary from Emerson and Jose. Go ahead, guys, please. Okay, Emerson. It's going to share, okay. Okay, Miss, um, when talking about the, the warehouse layout um, with Jose, we found the, the following uh, statement. And uh, what is a warehouse layout? Where does Warehouse layout is a planning designed of the warehouse to streamline overall operation. That's right, layout show how to improve the flow of the production and distribution. The objective of the warehouse layout is to find the optimum trade off between the handling cost and cost associated with the warehouse space. Consequently, Management tax is to maximize to the utiliz utilization of the total cube of the warehouse. That is, utilize it full volume while the maintenance low material handle cost. Okay. So, teacher, when we were looking for the additional information for warehouse layout, we we find that the most important is that you have to design the the right the right structure for your for your warehouse. However, we will choose that one because we find most important thing and we find new vocabulary in this page. So, for example, in my case, I'm going to read the next two ones. How important is the warehouse layout? A thoughtful warehouse layout can streamline process and ensure faster rates of productivity. Warehouse layouts fail to use space efficiently, ne negatively impacting the supply chain, workflow, and shipping times. Why is proper layout important? The importance of layout in graphic design, Gold Rabbit LTD. Employed to help structure a design and guide the viewers to the key information, 
Layout design include the arrangement the arrangement of image of images, text and space, and how they relate to each other. Effective layout design influences how a viewer inter interprets information and how clearly and easily they absorb the message. So for us, we were discussing that the most important thing is get a nice design since you start your business. Correct. And, that's it. and that, thank you, very well explained. I like that you broke it into pieces, right? What is the layout so you we can understand, right? The topic for room number one was the warehouse layout. It's one of the biggest challenges of warehouses. And then they explained first, we need to know what is a, a layout, right? So it's like the disposition, right? La disposición, como se ordena, right? So that's the warehouse layout. And they explain why is it important, right? And it's not like every warehouse is going to have the same layout. It's got to be adequate to what the warehouse is keeping, right? Or distributed. Very good explanation, room number one. Thank you. All right, now we're going to go with room number two. We have Eduardo Magaña and Wendy Ramirez. And they are going to explain warehouse challenge number two, and that is inventory accuracy. Go ahead, guys, please. Hello, teacher. Hi. Hi. Uh, uh, number two, inventory accuracy. Uh, to have bueno, to have a good inventory while why the clients to minimize the error it's is necessary to have a good organization in designing in designing that already contract and agency have to and to have a control of quality the product that exists a real inventory that I have a system on my team and that can very verify it signs this way they have inventory of uh, optimism product and that are that are no damage by their height rotation. <clears throat> okay, first of all, I would like to explain uh, a little bit about inventory accuracy. It's when in a warehouse uh, management and how to complete with a deliver or they had a, a enough uh, product in their uh, warehouse. So for that reason, it's critical you you uh, made the deliver in a really great way, and also in a time because uh, in the future if you had a problem or you or you are wrong with a direction, you will get a serious problem with the customers, and also you can spend money and time, and absolutely you will uh, love the the customers too. So you, for the reason you need to be very careful in that situation. In in the in the last paragraph, uh, say uh how, what is the best way if you want to improve your inventory management? And the best way is using the asset tying with RFID system and warehouse auto automation. Automation. I don't know what is the pronunciation, but I was looking. Uh, automation. Automation is the pronunciation. Automation. Mm -hmm. Okay. For the reason, uh, it was uh, very interesting to me because I was looking in, in internet about it. And it's about a system that you can um, use in your inventory to, for example, if you want to, to handle uh, what is the product you will sell. For example, you are selling a daily basis or, or grocery store. For example, you sell um, a jam. And you in the system you will set a jam. So for the reason in your store you had uh, ten jams, you will discount uh, a jam. You will get just nine. So the system will tell you to automatic when you need to buy more jam to get your inventory and a really great in in with the products that you need. And uh, and this is important because you will complete with the 
necessity of the customer has, and you will be a, a really great um, warehouse. Is the one understood about the <laughs> very good, Wendy Eduardo? Very good job with that research and that explanation. That's right. The reason why inventory accuracy is so so important and it's challenging, it's because sometimes when the warehouses begin working, they are like smaller warehouses and their inventory is updated accurately, right? But sometimes when they start to grow and grow and go bigger and bigger the inventory gets problem being accurate, right? Or updated accurately, as you were saying, right? Accuracy means exactitude in Spanish, right? So if I have 10 products available for distribution and I sold two, for example, as Eduardo was mentioning, right? The system should update it automatically in the inventory that now I only have eight, right? But if it doesn't happen, that's a problem, right? Because we could be charging customers extra or we could not be delivering the amount that customers require, et cetera, right? So there, therefore the importance, right? The importance of having the inventory as accurate as possible. Okay, it's a very good explanation, Eduardo, Wendy, thank you so much. And now we're gonna go with room number three. On room number three, we have Juan Carlos Herrera and Nelly Lilibet. And they are going to talk about challenge number three, which is seeking optimization. Seeking optimization. Let's hear them, Juan Carlos Nelly. Okay. Uh, because picking optimization is about the inventory control to prepare picking processes in a company. Uh, the picking can be optimized with a warehouse management system to improve the time to ship, total unit, unit to storage, and picking accuracy, warehouse capa capacity, and inventory turnover. Use a warehouse management system is important to do because picking is where a majority of warehouse management problems occur in more than 50% of the time associated with that activity. Okay, uh, the picking of, uh, optimization is very important because um, when uh, uh, the picking hero uh, represent the, the majority problems in the in the warehouse manager. Uh, is for that it's important to use a a, a, a system uh, such as a warehouse management system uh, to improve uh, some metrics uh, such as uh, time to ship uh, total unit uh, total unit uh, to store a uh, picking accuracy, a uh, warehouse capacity, and inventory turnover uh, or, or optimization the inventory. Uh, uh, no, is the turnover, no. uh, turn, turn over the inventory. Yeah, inventory uh, turnover. <laughs> turnover, yes. Um, um, uh, um, uh, it's important uh, that system, uh, can you help us um, uh, measure uh, 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 these metrics? Uh, if you have uh, this metric, you, you can see, uh, for example, uh, what areas uh, is perform or performing better than others, for example, or which, uh, which states uh, need a uh, uh, and more work. So. Very yeah. good. Thank you, Juan Carlos Nelly. Very well explained. Yeah, that's right. Picking optimization has everything to do. It goes hand in hand with the accuracy in the inventory, right? If you have an accurate and updated inventory, the picking optimization will be easier, right? Because the system will be updated, the picking will be faster. So it goes hand in hand, right? both challenges and also their solutions. So thank you, Nelly, Juan Carlos, well explained. And now we're gonna listen to room number four. In room number four, we have Mauricio Velasquez and Maria, my, 
Mayra Peña. Sorry, Mayra. We have Mauricio and Mayra, and they are going okay. to explain point number four. Point number four is labor costs. Go ahead, please. Okay, Mary. Mary, Mary. No, I start. Okay. Okay, we, we read uh, the four problems, the labor costs. Um, I understand and my analysis is uh, actually uh, many manual tasks are being replaced by robot or machine. It's a hard reality. How do you say realidad, teacher? Reality. Reality. Okay, it's a hard reality, but this the they do and uh, the technology the technology is good but on the other hand many people will lose their jobs because they will be replaced by robot or machine uh, we talk about this with Maurice and some companies some big companies uh, they acquire machines to do some activities. Um, the employees only do activities such as making reports or programming machines. It's very difficult to think, but uh, that is more benefic ben beneficial. The company beneficial for the company to acquire machine because <laughs> they don't uh, get sick like employees or than employees and I saw a little video and um, um, with the link for automated get vehicles 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 a, vehicles mm -hmm. it's a, interesting because in a warehouse there are no people only machines and they do have Heavy activities like moving containers, and they don't, they do people in the warehouse. Yeah, there are some warehouses nowadays, but they are completely automated, right? Yes. Yeah. I say comment. I say comment. Mm -hmm. uh, the labor cost uh, this includes the fact to the too many personnel are used in the holding of the product, which implies the hiring of a lot of personnel, even the hiring of the manager, which can be reduced by using machinery that can reduce human personnel, but it is better to invest in automatic Machinery because the investment can be recovered in the short period of time. An example the the, the Esther, uh, uh, we have a company, the Coca Cola and Pepsi. Uh, this company. Uh, este from the raw material handling to the finished product it is start this the start manage the materia prima material holding raw material materia prima raw material raw material and Finning the proof, only machinery automatic. Then uh, we, if they manage, como que they they handle they handle a little person all the machinery autom automatic. Exactly. That's right. Very good job, Mayra, Mauricio. Thank okay. you for that explanation. 
labor oh. costs labor costs have a lot to do right and some companies they prefer to invest more money in updating yeah. all their warehouse services to automate it right because even if it costs a lot of money in the moment mm -hmm. in the future it's gonna save them money because they are not paying employees they're not paying salaries they're not paying as uh, might mentioned they don't get sick right and as Mauricio said, everything is automated from the raw materials. When they get them, everything, a machine is performing everything, right? All the processes. So that was one of the challenges, whether to decide to do it or not, right? All right. Okay. So that's going to be it for tonight. Thank you, Maida, Mauricio, and everyone who okay. participated. Okay, guys. I totally forgot to take attendance earlier, so I'm going to take it right now. <laughs> They say here or present whenever you hear your name. We have Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez. Present teacher. Thank you. Daida Jonathan Fuentes. Eduardo Antonio Magaña. I am here. Thank you. Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present miss. Thank you. Fatima Gabriela Loza. Jonathan present, miss. Jose. Thank you, Fatima. Jonathan present, Jose. Miss. Thank you. Jorge Antonio Sanchez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jose Bernardo Lopez. Present. Thank you. Jose Carlos Argueta. Present. Thank you. Jose Cesar Lemos. Juan Carlos Herrera Delgado. Here, miss. Thank you. Juan Jose Herrera Alvarenga. Present. Thank you. Carla Sofía Argueta. Kenia Elizabeth Rodríguez. Mauricio Antonio Velasquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Mayra Cecilia Peña. Present. Thank you. Nelly Lilibet Andrade. Present. Thank you. Sandra Abigail Bonilla. And Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Present teacher. Thank you. Okay, guys, that's going to be it for tonight. Um, Sandra Abigail, if you want to stay for advisory, you can do it tonight, all right? Everybody else? I hope you have a great day tomorrow and I will see you at night. Have a good night. Good night. Good night, Miss. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Have some rest. Good night. Hi. Uh, miss, uh, sorry, I have a yes? problem with, uh, with the platform. When okay. I did the, the, the final lesson, uh, show me. Uh, uh, suscripción ruta de asistentes usted está inscrito en el curso como asistente dice este modo de tomar el curso no incluye la obtención de un certificado dice. y es como que no me tomara el examen final mm, cree que puede enviar eso al, al chat eh, de whatsapp Juan Carlos por favor si le puede tomar captura Ajá. para que los de administrativo ah. le contesten ahí porque sí creo okay, que eso yes. sería ellos que lo tienen. No sé si está bien que en esa modalidad, en esa modalidad lo tome o si se lo tienen que cambiar ellos como para que le dé certificado. No, sé, no estoy segura. Pero si lo puede poner en el grupo de WhatsApp, por favor, Juan Carlos. Ese sería, ¿no? ese sería el grupo. Quiero ver. Um, eh. Donde les mandé el link ahora. Ah, ok. Sí, porque uh -huh. yo, yo se lo mandé, pero. Ah, ah ok. Se me lo envió acá, ¿verdad? Ajá, en el grupo de WhatsApp. Ah, ahorita sí usted se lo pego ahí en el Ajá. Ajá, me parece. Y o sea, en vez de ponerle mis, póngale administrativo, por favor, ayuda. Y ellos le pueden, para que ellos le, le confirmen ahí si así es la, el setting o si hay que, le van a cambiar algo. ¿Ok? Ok. Ajá. Sí. Sí. O sea, si no le contestan para mañana en la noche en la clase, me deja saber. Y yo le voy a dar ahí escalar, ¿ok? Ok, gracias. All right, that's going to be it for tonight. Have a good night, Juan Carlos. Thanks. Take care.